I've never met one person that is 100% sure it will last forever. That just still seems silly to me. 100% forever? Hey, and welcome back to the Smart Couple Podcast. My name is Jason Gaddis, and this is episode 74. This podcast is all about earning your way into a fulfilling long-term relationship. And we crack the fantasy that it's happily ever after, it's supposed to feel good all the time, and why can't my partner just get along, why can't we just get along, and everything should just be okay. Because our culture might sell us, uh, or our family, someone sells us a certain version of marriage or long-term partnership, and then we swallow it without question. And then we beat ourselves up because we're having a hard time. And comparing ourselves to everybody else that's faking smiles, telling us that their marriage and their everything's great, only to find out a few years later that there's an affair going on in that marriage or that they're getting a divorce. And it's like, what? I thought you guys were the like model couple. What's happening? You know what I'm talking about, right? You have people in your life that looked happy on the outside, and then you found out they're getting a divorce, or there's a separation, or an affair, or something went down, and, and you're shocked. Well, that's just our own naivete around thinking that people are truthful. <laughs> The people in your life that tell you everything is great and they continue to tell you that year in and year out are telling you half the story. The other half of the story is my marriage is fucking hard. It's brutal. It's We got in a fight last night. I didn't think we were going to make it. Or, wow, he cheated on me and we're in therapy or you know something like that. Like, How many of your friends are telling you what's really going on? So here at The Smart Couple, we're encouraging those conversations and we're saying, yeah, that's what's going on. It's challenging, it's intense, there's highs and lows, it's pleasure, it's painful, it's uh, the whole gamut you're going to find when you lock horns with one person year in and year out for decades, you will face the darkest places in yourself as you try to navigate that terrain. So this podcast is here to help you with that. It's saying, yeah, we get it. We get it that it's hard. It's intense. And we're going to give you some good street-level tools that are going to help you if you want them. Okay. So welcome and welcome back. I wanted to just take a minute while I have the mic here to comment on a marriage blog I read recently. And it was called The Marriage Trap, How to Deal with Society Pressuring You to Get Married. Now, I'm curious if you felt pressure to get married, if you're married, or do you, if you're single, or if you're um, dating, and certainly if you're in your late 30s, maybe early 40s, some people may be in their early 30s, but I'm curious, do you feel pressured by whoever to get married? And um, I would guess that if I polled you, that the vast majority of you would say, uh, or let's let's just say over 50% of you would say yes. Someone, somewhere, um, I, I felt pressured by someone or something, whether it was amorphous entity like culture or society, or if it was an actual person like your mother, pressuring you to get married. Um, that's probably going on. So, But the, the challenge with this article I had was um, was this comment. This person said, if you're about to commit being in a relationship for your entire life, shouldn't you be 100% positive it will last forever? I've never met one person that is 100% sure it will last forever. That just seems silly to me. 100% forever? Like, did you ever think that way? Maybe you did, but you certainly got shown uh, by your marriage or yourself, that that is a fantasy um, forever. And how can we possibly know with 100% certainty anything in our life will last forever, except being a parent? 
like, you know, or being a child to a family, like family is a hundred percent forever. Um, as much as you try to disconnect from that. Uh, but a marriage, not so much. Um, so anyway, I thought that was a little naive or something to, to say that, that people might promote the idea that you can be a hundred percent positive and knowing about the long haul forever. I just, I just don't think people operate that way. And then the other idea this article perpetuated that I wanted to caution you against was that you need to love yourself before you can love another person. A baby doesn't learn to love itself by, um, you know, in isolation from its mother. It doesn't happen. It learns to embrace itself over time, up and down, in and out, over time, by being in relationship with its mother. It learns about itself. It learns about the world. It learns about who it is through its parents and its environment, right? Uh, you're no different as an, as an adult is we learn to love and embrace more of ourselves. It's not black and white. It's not you love yourself or you don't. It's a continuum and a spectrum. You learn to love more of yourself by being in relationship with one person over many years because they trigger you in places that you have not loved and embraced yourself. And over time you learn your partner ideally helps you embrace those parts. And if you're listening to the Smart Couple podcast, you're getting tools that help you do that. And if you take, you know, you go deeper and you take my courses or courses with the Relationship School, you get that. That's just how it works. If you want to value yourself more, guess what? Get in a relationship because it's going to show you where you are not valuing yourself. <laughs> okay, so um, be savvy when you're reading articles like this online and um, bring your own healthy skepticism, uh, bring what you're learning here and um, pit it against what you read and see from your own experience how it lives in you, okay? All right, today we're gonna talk about the disconnection connection spectrum and what to do if you're feeling disconnected from yourself or your partner. How do you get back into connection? That's what this simple podcast today is all about. And I think it's going to serve you. So stay tuned for to the end. Listen to the end for your two action steps and a chance to win some free coaching from me. Okay, let's do this. Here is uh, the Disconnection Connection podcast. Hey there. Okay, I want to talk to you about what to do after a fight and how to reconnect with your partner in eight or so steps, all right? So the context here is that we're setting up is you've been disconnected from your partner. There's been some distancing going on. You're a little frustrated and hurt maybe, or you know, you're thinking you're connected, but your life feels dull and you feel a little depressed and grumpy and irritable. Those are signs that you're disconnected from yourself, right? I wrote a blog post called the seven or the 10 signs I'm disconnected from my heart. And I just want to mention a few of these uh, before we get into how to reconnect. Why? Because some people can be complacently moving through their marriage or relationship, not even aware of the fact that you're disconnected with yourself. And if you're disconnected with you, chances are you're going to be disconnected with your spouse. That's just how it works. When I'm having a grumpy day, shitty day, uh, feeling fuzzed out, checked out, I can only connect with my partner to the degree that I'm connected to myself. Now, as you'll see, you can use your partner to reconnect because you're disconnected. That's definitely possible, which we're going to talk about in a minute. But first, let's just cover some signs and symptoms that you're probably disconnected with you, which is one of the first, some, for some of us, kind of more, we're more aware of ourself maybe than our partner. Um, this is going to be good for you. Other people, you're tracking your partner so much that it might, the signs and symptoms might be that they're disconnected, which means you're disconnected from them, right? You're unplugged, so to speak. 
Okay, signs and symptoms I might be disconnected for me is I'm no longer emotionally present. I'm half there with my relationships. I'm half listening. I'm checking out as I'm listening, right? Number two, I don't feel connected to or with my partner, my primary partner. And if I'm single, I might not feel connected to anyone. And maybe even my dog or cat, I'm not really feeling the synergy go on because I'm disconnected, right? Number three, I'm just checked out. I feel some kind of low-grade funk. I'm the grumpy guy at the grocery store, and I'm a little unmotivated, uninspired. I want to take naps. I want more wine. I want to maybe complain when I am with my friends. And I feel like it's I'm moving through a thick fog or like a blanket is covering me and moving through my life, right? That's a great sign I'm disconnected. Number four is I'm irritable. I'm just easily annoyed and triggered. My little porcupine quills are out. I'm less approachable. Other people can feel that I'm just kind of collapsed or edgy, right? Number five, I know for me, I get a flatter affect. My face looks serious, dull, emotionless. I might smile, but it's fake, you know? And I can feel the flatness and the tension in my face. Number six, my skin might be sensitive to the touch. And if my partner touches it, it feels a little grating. Okay, that's a sign I'm disconnected. Number seven, I'm easily triggered by minor things, thus I get into silly fights over nothing, right? Little shit bothers me. Number eight, I consume, medicate, and distract. So you want to notice if you're shopping more, snacking more, checking email or Facebook every two seconds on your phone, uh, consuming lots of sugar, alcohol, drugs. Uh, if you're someone who likes pornography, you're going to photos of scantily clad women. If you're a guy, you know, you're uh, surfing porn and checking out that way. Uh, Facebook, movies, sports, whatever is going to pull you out of your shitty feeling of yourself. Or you want to distract away from you. Okay, and they're really normal, by the way, these kind of behaviors, and even socially acceptable. Uh, number nine, uh, if you're a guy, this is one I certainly have experienced, is I might objectify women more. Uh, and whenever I'm not in my heart, I will objectify people in my life, um, whether it's women or my wife or uh, just people. Things and people, I feel separate, right? When, when I feel separate, from life and myself, everything else is an object for me to look at or evaluate or judge, All right? And this is really common for us. Number 10 is I isolate unconsciously pushing people away, but simultaneously feeling sorry for myself and wanting someone to come notice me or rescue me, All right? So those are 10 signs that you might be disconnected. What the hell is disconnection? It's, again, uh, very generally speaking, it's just when we feel like we're not really with ourselves or our heart. We are in our head. We're in maybe a state of fear. We're in a state of contraction around some challenge we're having. And we pull away from that because it's what we learned to do as a kid. And it's like a dissociation away from adversity or a challenging experience. And if you pay close attention and you know yourself here pretty well, Disconnection is what happens when we get scared or triggered. We disconnect because if we stay in our body and we feel rage or deep hurt or grief or even the um, more joyful emotions, bliss or lots of pleasure, it's too much for us, uh, especially as youngsters, if we got the message that it wasn't okay to feel our feelings and be vulnerable, we disconnected as children and then it became a habit and now we're big people walking around uh, disconnected, okay? So that's a little glance into disconnection. So I'm sure you can relate to these. The first step here is to just acknowledge that you're probably disconnected from yourself or your partner. It's primarily going to show up, depending on if you focus generally on yourself or your partner, that's where it's going to show up. Wow, I feel disconnected from my partner. Well, chances are you're disconnected from yourself. Um, or it's possible you're the connected one, you're really with yourself, and your partner is like the ghost wandering around the house. That's possible. And if you focus on yourself, you just notice based on those signs I told you, and if those aren't your signs, those are signs maybe that your partner is disconnected, okay? 
So how do you reconnect? Well, here's seven quick steps for you to get yourself back into connection with you, which is going to help you connect with them. And them could be, if you, again, if you're single, it could be your job, it could be your pets, it could be your life, it could be your friends, your community, uh, nature, whatever you feel like normally you want to have a connection with. Okay. So number one is you ask, when did this feeling start? Okay. And I'll include these in the show notes, and I would recommend writing them down unless you're driving or jogging, of course. Number two, what caused this feeling? What the hell happened in the past few days or weeks that is noteworthy? When did this start, right? Like, hmm. So I'm, I'm, I'm asking the question, when did this start, and what caused it? I used to go weeks feeling disconnected like this and just feeling shitty, and kind of, I called it my funk, and I just wasn't pleasant to be around. And the only thing that took the edge off was alcohol or climbing or masturbation or something like that. But it never solved the problem. Uh, what solved the problem was me like getting to the bottom of what got triggered in me. And that's what I'm recommending here. Number three, isolate the incident, event, or relationship fight or issue that triggered you into feeling this way. Okay. When did this start? What caused this? And then you want to zero in on the incident. Number four, you're going to want to get into your body and your heart. So disconnection, as we've said, is like a dissociation. It's not being present with ourselves or our heart and our body. So you want to find what gets me back in my body. Is it nature? Is it music, movement, stillness, med you know, meditation, yoga? What gets me back inside my body? You've got to find your way back into your heart. And one of the fastest ways uh, to do that for me is to get in relationship with someone else, which I talk about in step six. Okay, so get back in your body. Step five is dive in and feel it. Feel what's in there. Let's say you realize, oh, right, I got disconnected from my wife because we had that fight a week ago and I never really, we never really circled back. There's still that distance and tension. And she said that thing to me that really triggered me. So I've zeroed in and now I'm like, okay, wow, I, it turns out I'm hurt. So I close my eyes and I go inside my body and I feel my hurt. Just like a wave, it's going to pass. And you want to feel your feelings. This is very fundamental, human uh, being advice, right? Just, you got to learn how to be with your experience because when you don't and you keep cutting off from it, you're going to be a pretty jammed up person walking around the planet. So feel it like you mean it, folks. Get in there and feel it. And like a wave, it's just going to move through you. Ah, you ever notice after a good cry, you feel so much better? It's that kind of thing. Number six, get in a relationship with a close friend. So this is, if you have a partner, you do it with them. If you don't, you do it with a close friend. And you ask them, hey, will you connect with me? And I remember sometimes I would be disconnected for uh, many days, sometimes weeks, with my wife, then girlfriend. And I would say, honey, I, I need to connect with you. I think that's the issue is I'm feeling disconnected. I'm feeling really scared in my life, feeling really triggered. And I would go to her and say, will you hold my hands? And we'd sit on the bed and uh, knees touching, maybe looking in each other's eyes. And I would start by saying, I'm scared. I'm scared. And I'd see if I can actually make contact with that statement in my body as a true statement. And this is one of the fastest entry points back into you. Um, I mean, who wants to go toward fear, right? And sometimes that's exactly what you need to do, right? All right, number seven, you just own up to what the hell you've been up to and your disconnection, what got you there, what is bringing you back, and you come back and face your partner, okay? So there is this, all of this is a bit of a repair, and a repair is a specific different episode that I want to do. This is just how do I come back to myself? And why not throw in a step here where you're just owning that you've been away, and it's probably impacted your partner, and hey, I'm, I'm coming back now. I got to the root of the problem, and I'm coming back into connection. A final step I like to throw in is 
commit to taking care of the root issue. Now this is after, you, let's say, you've re reconnected and you notice, gosh, I have a habit and a pattern of anytime my partner says X, I, I shut down. Or anytime my mother-in-law calls, I go into shutdown or disconnection and I don't know what to do and so I check out. Well, if that's the case and you can zero in on what the issue is and it's now repeating, now you're looking at a pattern, you want to commit to taking care of that. And you do that by hiring a professional to help you resolve and dissolve that issue to the point where it doesn't take you out. Okay. All right. Now, the power here is once I reconnect to me, I'm available to you. And sometimes the entryway back into being available to you is through you. As I've said, relationship itself sometimes is the fastest way to get in our body and get in our heart more so than any other practice. You've got to find out what works for you though, okay? All right, now notice how this podcast is you taking responsibility for the relationship, coming back into connection. You might claim to be the connected partner looking to your disconnected partner that's not listening to this right now and you're wanting to know what to do. <laughs> yeah, again, uh, we're in kind of a win-lose model there which Ellen and I are going to do a podcast on, and it doesn't work. So if you have a partner who habitually is disconnected and doesn't has no interest in connecting with themselves and learning how, or with you, uh, I'd ask you, why are you in that relationship? Okay, that's not a smart couple at that point. Remember, the goal of any relationship is to grow, to foster a strong connection, establish a secure home base, and to dominate your life together in a strong way. And disconnection is simply part of the path. So get used to it, but don't tolerate it in yourself or your partner. Meaning, just like someone being stuck in uh, their hurt feelings, we don't want people to stay stuck for weeks on end. Um, you wouldn't want that of yourself or your kids. It means we're not finding adequate solutions to get through it. Um, when you or your partner or anyone else in your life stays stuck for many months or years, there becomes a point where they're just invested in being stuck. And you can't help someone who wants to remain there. Uh, you can help them by empowering yourself and moving on. So take responsibility to get the relationship you want. Relax knowing that disconnection is part of the path and part of the process. And know yourself well enough to come back into connection because you value that. It feels better, right? Like when I'm disconnected in life, it feels like shit. And I'm not pleasant to be around. I'm not attractive to be around. Work is harder. Everything is harder. Parenting is more challenging. I'm edgier. I'm a dick. You know, I'm not on my game. So all of that is incentive for me to get back in my body, back in my heart, and find the tools to work through it and to get connected with me again. Because life, when I'm disconnected, is that much harder. See, we have a habit of thinking it's easier, just check out. It's not. It, I mean, if you're fully ignorant and you're completely checked out, it might be. Okay, that's a valid argument. But for you, who's into growth and development, it's more rigorous to be checked out. So life is already challenging enough. Meet it with your heart. Meet life with your big heart and your big beautiful self by being in that body of yours and going after it. All right, talk very soon, friends. Okay, great. Two action steps, ready? And then I'll talk about the contest coming up where you can win some free coaching with me. The first action step is for you to make a list of your signs that you're disconnected. Now, if you're in a partnership, you could do this together where you both list the signs that you're disconnected from yourself and from your partner. Well, I get irritable. Well, I look at Facebook all the time. Well, I don't want to work. I don't want to get out of bed. Whatever your signs are that you're disconnected, make that list. This is, promotes your self-knowledge, which leads to empowerment, all right? And then share that with someone close to you, like a partner or someone in your life, as a way to call yourself out, call yourself forward, say, hey, 
I disconnect sometimes. And this, these are kind of the, my classic signs, right? And then, of course, action two, action step two is obvious, which is how you reconnect. List your top three ways to reconnect to yourself, which in turn leads you to reconnect to your partner. Now, one of those ways might be to reconnect with your partner helps you connect to yourself. Great, write that down. Uh, could be exercise, it could be, and get really specific what kinds of exercise, what kinds of activities in nature, what kinds of solo time activities do you like work for you, like help you get in your body, help you get back inside your heart and connected. And you know the difference between disconnection and connection, I guarantee it. No one here listening has the experience of being disconnected 100% of the time or connected 100% of the time. You're both disconnected and connected. So you need to know the difference there and know what helps bring you back because life feels better when I'm connected for me. And I'm guessing it's the same for you. So list your three ways uh, that you can reconnect to yourself and then share that with a friend or partner. Again, as a way to practice being in relationship with someone and being honest and being real. Because remember, the smart couple, smart individuals here are authentic as best they can around what's actually going on in their life. Not, you know, just making small talk and talking bullshit, okay? Because the bullshit conversations are less fulfilling and less nourishing. You know this. Great. So those are your two action steps. I've got another podcast coming up. I just want to plant the seed here on why it's important for you to interrupt your partner and um, not let someone ramble. Okay. <laughs> I did a Facebook post the other day that brought some interesting comments. Um, some people got pretty defensive with this one and some people want to know more. So that's coming up. And then also uh, contest. Okay. Here's how to enter the contest between this week and next week is you're going to, you got to be in the smart couple private Facebook community. Okay. That means you're basically a fan of this podcast. You, you listen and you want to practice and engage uh, with other people. You want to be a fly on the wall or you want to share or you want to comment on other people's posts. Okay. That group is really just a community of people that are in this conversation that want to be real about their relationship problems and their relationship solutions, individuals and couples. Okay, you don't need to be in a relationship to be in there, but it's definitely not a dating group. Okay, don't do not come into that group thinking you're going to get a date and that you're going to put your photo on there. Uh, that's happened numerous times, and we just delete that and we just block you from the group. Okay, so none of that shit. You're committed to monogamy and partnership, and you want to learn about that, and you're going to be respectful. Join that community, and then the second step is to leave us a review, take a screenshot of your review, and email it to us. That's your way to enter the contest and we're going to take 10 names and then we're going to draw them out of a hat uh, like we did a couple months back with the contest and that person whoever wins I'll announce it on the uh, podcast and you get three uh, or excuse me free 30 minute coaching session with me and I'm going to drill into your relationship world you've got to come to that be prepared to come to that conversation with like a really burning issue or burning question that you want my feedback on specifically, okay? That's how you can play. And in the meantime, go do the exercise, all right? Get more honest with your partner and a past partner perhaps and or a friend and uh, do the exercise, okay? Okay, we'll talk very soon, folks. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening.